I'd like to read from my text tonight one verse in Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, feel, or show great joy or delight. Cheerful, happy, joyful. You always feel like uh, rejoicing. You might say, that's a really um, interesting topic to have to preach on in these days when look around is what's there to be joyful about the key is rejoice in the Lord that's why we can rejoice not because of what's going on in our country and our world because it's very depressing but as Christians we have a hope that's beyond this world and in spite of all that's going on, we can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, Paul says, rejoice. I have to admit that I don't always feel like rejoicing. The uh, human side comes through, and you listen to the news, and you hear the things, and it's just, like I said, it's depressing. It's it's very concerning what, what is going to happen next. But if for no other reason this sermon is for me, rejoice. Don't be so consumed with what's going on that you're just depressed and, oh, no, what's going to happen? But rejoice in the Lord. When things are going good, it's, it's not a problem to rejoice. It's not a problem to be cheerful and happy, joyful. It's just a natural emotion when things are going well. But when things are not going well, when difficulties come, whether it's in our, in our world or in our life, it's very difficult to rejoice or be cheerful and happy. But here, Paul is writing to the Philippians, and he's writing from prison. So Paul is not in the most joyful, uh, happy, cheerful situation right here, yet he's telling the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord. Always, again I say rejoice. Paul was very acquainted with difficult and hard times. In 2 Corinthians he kind of gives a list of some of the things that he went through, and I'll read those. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 through 28. 2 Corinthians 11, starting at verse 24. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. And I've heard said that they said that because the next one might kill you. So five times he had these 40 stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods, once I was stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watching often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that affect the outside of us, that which cometh on mommy daily, the care of all the churches. So Paul, uh, I don't know about you, but I can't compete with that type of uh, things that he went through. We've all been through difficult things. But Paul knew what it meant to suffer and to have hard times, yet 
he is writing from prison here and telling the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord. Always rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. In Acts 27, it tells the account of Paul when he was being taken as a prisoner uh, to appear before Caesar, and he warned them that they shouldn't go on this voyage because of the time of year, yet uh, they went anyway, and they find themselves out in the uh, uh, sea there, and this terrible storm comes up, and it says when uh, sun and stars didn't appear for many days, and the tempest kept raging on, all hope that we would be saved was taken away. In the natural, it was, we're done. There's no hope for us. Yet, uh, Paul had a faith in God, and an angel appeared to him and said, you know what, uh, it's, you're going to appear before Caesar, and all those are going to be saved in the ship. So he gets up in the midst of the storm when there's not a single thing to be joyful about, not a single thing to rejoice about, and he says, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. We're throwing the stuff necessary for the ship overboard. There's no hope. And be of good cheer. Are you out of your mind? There was something Paul had that all the other men did not have. And that was the Lord. In spite of his circumstances, in spite of the uh, hopelessness, he had a faith in God that transcended everything that was going on, and he could say, be of good cheer. He could say, rejoice in the Lord. The commentary that I read says, Paul's attitude teaches us an important lesson. Our inner attitudes do not have to reflect our outward circumstances. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, the things that are coming at us on the outward don't have to affect uh, the joy and the peace that God has given us. We can rejoice in the Lord even when things aren't very nice. Thank the Lord for that. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, Paul says, Rejoice evermore. Same thing. Rejoice always. Rejoice evermore. The commentary on this said, people are naturally happy on some occasions, but the Christian joy is not dependent on circumstances. It comes from what Christ has done, and it is constant. Amen. When we can point back to a time when we uh, bent our knees, we surrendered our life to him, and we knew that he heard our prayer, and he forgave us of our sins, and he wrote our name down in heaven, we have something to be joyful about. Amen. We have something to rejoice about. And the old enemy, he, he comes around, and he, he dis, uh, uh, appeals to the human side of us, and, and it just looks hopeless so many times, and we just want to be depressed and go, oh no, what's going to happen? But if we can just remember what God has done for us, we can say we can rejoice in the Lord, not in what's going on, but we can rejoice in the Lord. We can rejoice in the hope that God has for us of, of heaven, that he's coming back, that this life is temporary. Philippians 4.4, 4, my text says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Mm -hmm. Always. Again, I say rejoice. Amen. So I, I looked on my phone for the definition of rejoice. And that was part of it. Feel or show great joy or delight. And I was glancing there, and I don't spend a lot of time on my phone. I know some people are spend a lot of time, but I typically don't spend a lot of time on my phone. And I noticed a couple of questions. It says, what does rejoice in the Lord mean? It's like, really? On the, I, my iPhone says, re, what does it say to re, rejoice in the Lord mean? So, and this is what it said. It's like, great. Rejoice in the Lord means knowing Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior and treasure. It means he gives us deeper, pure, sweeter, more lasting pleasure and gladness than anything this world has to offer. Isn't that great? And then it has another question. 
How can we rejoice in the Lord always? It's like, I'm amazed. It's like, this is wonderful. It says one, make sure that you are in right relationship with God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Our world needs to hear that through saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Two, walk in submission to the sovereign spirit of God. Three, view your trials through the lens of scripture. Four, deal properly with relational conflicts. Five, sing praises to God. Six, serve the Lord with gladness. Seven, focus your mind daily on the Lord and the things he has promised us in Christ. Wow. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, to think that you'd find it on, a, on an iPhone. Praise the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord for what he has done for us, for the price that he paid on Calvary, for the hope that we have of heaven our home. Continuing on in Philippians 4. These are just, this is just an awesome passage. Um, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, or don't be anxious about any, anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And this eighth verse, uh, I found myself reading it um, more than one morning uh, recently. It's, it's something that we could read every single morning because we need reminded of. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, when we're so bombarded with, with everything, uh, especially in the last few months, um, and, the, and the cares of life can just kind of settle in on you, uh, you know, it, it's good to remind ourselves, looking into Scripture and saying, you know what, the Lord wants us to think on good things. Uh, positive things, uh, promises that he has promised to be with us, that he'd never leave us nor forsake us, that, uh, that he was, would be there. The 19th verse says, but my God shall supply all your need. Not just some of your need or a few of your needs, but it says all. That, that doesn't leave anything out. What a promise uh, when the old enemy says, you know what, what's going to happen? Are you going to make it? We can look at that and say, my God shall supply all my need. I'm going to make it through Christ, my Savior. 1 Thessalonians 5.16, I read that verse. I'm going to read a few more. And if you notice, these scriptures different portions here, different places, they're saying the same thing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Here in Thessalonians, rejoice evermore. 17, pray without ceasing. Uh, keep praying. Uh, that's, that's what we need to do. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I've said before, it doesn't say give thanks for everything because some things it's like, how can I give thanks for that? I mean, that's, it's horrible. But in everything, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the situation, we can find something to thank God for. If nothing else, if we have absolutely nothing else to thank Him for, we can thank Him for saving our never-dying soul and that we have a hope of heaven. Even if we're in a situation like Paul was in, and it seems like all hope is gone, my life in front of me, everything is, is just a shambles, there's no hope, we can still rejoice in what Jesus Christ has done for us in the hope of heaven. Yeah. Romans 12.12. 12. Tell me if this sounds like we've just been talking about. Rejoicing in hope patient in tribulation, 
continuing instant in prayer. When things come our way that are not very nice, what's our first reaction? Paul tells us in Romans to be instant in prayer. May God help us when things go wrong, when we have those bad days, to be instant in prayer and say, God, you know. On this side of life, we, we don't understand why some things happen. And maybe someday we'll understand, maybe we won't, but I, I know one thing, when we make it over there, it, we, we won't really care what happened here because it'll be worth it. But in the meantime, God wants us to trust him. He wants us to uh, look to him in faith, believing, uh, claiming the promises in his word uh, that he is going to take care of us. He don't want, doesn't want us to be uh, doubtful and sad and downhearted. He wants us to be of good cheer. He wants us to rejoice. He wants us to thank him. He wants us to praise him. Even when everything seems terrible, he still wants us to rejoice in the Lord. Psalm 5, 11 and 12. Some more just awesome verses and you start looking at rejoice and it's it's just all over in the bible i mean it's just amazing but this is just a few to touch on it but these are a couple more great verses psalm 5 starting at verse 11 but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with a shield. Oh, what, what we have, the protection, the, the things that God has provided for us. It, we have something to rejoice about. Thank the Lord for his word for what he has promised us. So I remember a little devotional I read, and it said that the tea kettle, although up to its neck in hot water, continues to sing. Now maybe some of the youngest generation don't know what a tea kettle is. That's a little pot you put on the stove you actually turn the stove on, and it heats up the water in that little tea kettle, and it starts making a whistling noise depending on the tea kettle, and you know it's, that it's hot because it's making a noise. Well, you get the picture if you can see that, the tea kettle up to its neck in hot water, yet it's just singing away. And that's what the Lord wants us to do even if it seems like we're up to our neck in hot water with just life and circumstances and things, he wants us to rejoice. He wants us to sing praises to him. And you know, sometimes when things just aren't going right, like Stan said, those bad days, and, and things just aren't going right, and, and all of a sudden a, a song will just be in your heart. And you go, you listen to what the words are, and it's like, wow. You know, that, that's something that only the Lord can do. That, you, you can't get that in the world. The Lord is faithful. Uh, the message tonight is rejoice in the Lord. The message for me tonight is rejoice in the Lord. And may I remember that uh, tomorrow morning, uh, this week as life happens and things come our way and sometimes it's not very fun, I know that. But may God help us till he comes and takes us to heaven uh, that, that hope that we have that motivates us to keep serving him. May he help us to rejoice, to be thankful, to be instant in prayer, uh, just those things that he says, and we're to think on those things which are, are good, that are just good. He's going to bless us. He's our shield. He's going to protect us. He's going to take care of us. 
Uh, what a hope we have. There's nothing to be sad or downhearted or depressed. We have the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth that is right there to be at our side and to help us and to take us through. We have everything to rejoice in tonight. May we come before him tonight at these altars and in the pew and just rejoice in the Lord. He will bless us tonight. The song is 591.